Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video I'm going to show you how I installed uh, ATX power supply on my CR10 printer. I had a faulty power supply coming with my printer that died after just a few days of use and I wasn't able to source a new power supply locally but I had a ATX power supply laying around so I installed that temporarily while I got a replacement. So let's have a look after the intro how I installed the ATX power supply. So as I was not recording the process while I was installing the power supply, I just want to show you how things are connected and what I did to be able to connect the ATX power supply. So at the moment I have bought a replacement power supply that will go inside the control box. So I will be removing the ATX power supply and want to record this video on how everything is connected. So if you have the same situation can get a minimal power supply that I got. You can use an ATX power supply. So the first thing for me to do is just to open up the control box and, and disconnect everything and, and show you the connections. So the first thing I have to do is to remove the handle for the filament. And then I can open up the control box. Normally the main power connectors away, so the power supply is, is connected. So the power supply is here connected, and this is just a 500 watt power supply that I decided to use. And I'm going to show you how I connected everything. So there are like two main outputs of the power supply. Normally a power supply like this has several outputs. Um, even though like this has two 12 volt outputs, one is rated for 15 amps and one is for 14 amps. And I connected one output to the to the MOSFET for the heated bed and one output to the controller board. So I don't use the same output on the on the power supply for everything because one output does not have the power to do everything i'm gonna just disconnect this and i'll show you how i prepared the connectors so here for the mosfet i took the cable that was usually planned for the PCXA Express, like a graphic card connector, and put all three cables for the positive into one connector, and all three negative into one connector, and connected it in voltage input here, on the, and connected it here on the positive side of the MOSFET, and then the negative side here on the negative part of the MOSFET. So this was one connector and you I had this connector types that was the same type as the original cables and I clamped them together and put some isolation on so it wouldn't uh, touch the, the top plate or nothing so you have to really prepare for this and I did solder in the wires to the connectors. The other, other cable it goes to the control box and the only good way to connect the cable to the control box is to remove it from the chassis. It's, it's in an angle from the connector, so you can't really get the wires in without taking the control box out. So I'm going to remove that.
when you take out the card, the control box, the, the power connection is at one end and you really don't want to disconnect all the cables. But if you rotate this around you can get, get to the power input and that's this connector here. So th this connector, this is a connector like a phone, four pin connector that normally goes to the CPU socket on the motherboard and I have two positive wires and two negative wires put together under, into this power input. So cable has a different output on the power supply itself. So the heated bed is one output and this is a different output. So one thing to note when you're using a ATX power supply as a normal power supply, this green wire here on the power supply plug that goes to the motherboard, you have to ground it to the black wires. So normally you would take one black wire and the green wire and solder them together. And this power supply I have here, it is somewhat broken, so it's always on if I if it gets mains power. So I really don't didn't need to connect those. But normally to power on a ATX power supply, those two wires has to connect. So you would either solder those together or make a jumper that plugs in here. And you can often get a jumper that just is a plug that connects here to get the, the green wire connecting to the negative wire. But just this power supply was somehow broken in that way that it always went on just by connecting mains. So I didn't have to connect this. But now with the ATX power supply unplugged, uh, the test to install the meanwhile well power supply I bought as a replacement for the original one. And now I'll connect the mains plug and, and switch back into the box. And I've put aside all the connections that I took out when I removed the broken power supply. So I'll put the cables in and, and connect the power supply. So the replacement power supply I got is a Meanwell NES 350 slash 12. It's a 12 volt 350 watt power supply and it's rated for 29 amps and the original power supply was rated for 30 amps. So this is very similar and I think people have had good success with the Meanwell power supplies so I decided to buy that instead of the original one that was broken. But now I have the all the main wiring to do and I'll start by connecting everything to the power supply and, and put in the, the 12 volt cables back into the connector on the control, control board. So this will be just a reverse engineering <laughs> process from where I took the original power supply out. Now the main input power for the board is connected, I can put it in place again. You want to get all the screws in before you tighten because you have to align the board with the mounts. Now the board is in and here are the, the main input wires for the 12 volts. So now I can connect the main switch and, and the plug. When I was removing everything in the initial replacement, I took a photo of everything, but all the connectors are 
clearly marked so you can't really go wrong with the connectors so here's the earth pin and here's the neutral and the mains goes into the fuse box that is here so this is the output of the fuse box so this is earth neutral and, and mains so you just connect everything back in that orientation So the earth cable connecting to the earth socket. And the neutral goes in this in the middle one. And then the mains goes to the power switch and the output of the power switch goes then to the power supply. And this one is like a snap in. You see the mains connector has the ground, the neutral, and the main voltage going to the switch, and then the output from the switch. So those three are the the mains in that have to connect to the power supply. So when I had the ATX power supply, I was just having one output from that, and this wire that goes to the heated bed, this will remove will be removed here from this connector and will collect directly to the power supply and this will be an input wire for the heated for the MOSFET and here's the ground wire going to the MOSFET so now all the wires are prepared and now I have to connect it to the new power supply so here at the power supply side is the main input, the new, neutral and live and ground and then there's three output for minus and three output for 12 volts and then there's a voltage adjust knob here and I'm gonna start by connecting the mains power and measure the voltage to see how it is before I connect the rest of the stuff to it So before you connect everything, just make sure nothing is touching the main connectors here and don't have a cat or a children just nearby. You want to make sure you're not touching everything. So I'm going to connect the mains and power everything on. And now the power supply should be on and I should be getting a voltage reading. And the voltage I'm getting is 12.07, so that's pretty good. So I don't see a reason to adjust the output voltage. It's straight on 12.0 volts, um, so this is a good thing. So I'm not gonna turn the small knob to adjust the voltage. Some people have adjusted the voltage to a higher voltage to have the heat bed heating up faster, but 
I'm not gonna do that at least not at this moment. So now this is set and now I have to connect the outputs. There are three positive connectors and, and two negative connectors. So the nectar connectors are here in the in the middle. Next uh, power positive connectors. Now with all the connectors connected, I'm going to put on the plastic here that protects the connectors. It's important to put this on so you don't have a risk of touching the terminals. And before I put this in, I'm going to turn the printer on and see if, if the printer is, is working normally. Get the power to the box. And I'm just going to heat up a little bit to see the power is going to the bed as well. So let's see if the heat for the heated bed rises. You see the hot end is heating up, so that is getting power. And the heat bed is also heating up, so that is getting power. So the MOSFET is working, so everything is good. I'm just going to turn it off and, and finish up. So normally I would clean up the cables and tidy everything up, but I'm going to do a video on where I replace the stock fans of the control box. So I'm not going to tidy up the cables at this moment, but I'll do it at a later time. But now I'll just put in the power supply and I'm going to run a print and have it running for some time before I say this is a successful replacement, but from the start it has a has power to the heated bed and to the hot end, so I'm optimistic this is gonna work quite well. So now I'm just gonna put in the power supply and close everything up. So the screws for the power supply are M4. Um, I'm not sure where I put the original screws, but I had the extra set of screws, so I'm just going to put those in. Just have to make sure you don't clamp any cables when you tighten this up. not the correct screws shape so they're like have a flange to them but you should have a flathead screw for this but it doesn't really matter um, just make sure all the cables are in a good place and are not squished too much so I just went to go over uh, connectors and see everything is in good shape before you close everything down and now I can put the lid on process I had to, to remove the ATX power supply and if you're gonna plug in an ATX power supply to this printer you can you can play this video backwards <laughs> so to speak to see how I did, did things but now I have the internal power supply from Minwell connected and the printer is working and everything 
a heating up and, and everything is good. I'm going to use this power supply instead of the original one because I had a faulty power supply right from the start. I was only working for a few days before it blew up. I think it was, I was trying to get a new power supply from Realty or Light in the Box, the reseller of the printer. And they have not given me a new power supply after one month of writing and talking to them through their ticketing system. And they have basically closed the ticket without sending me a new power supply. So going on with PayPal that I just started. Probably I will get my money back at some point for, for this because I needed to buy my buy a new power supply to have this printer up and running. Um, I installed the ATX power supply while I was waiting for this minimal power supply to arrive because it was not available here in the local electronic store. But for now I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.